And a good morning, everybody. And yes, the dice are back in town. And uh, well, it is, we are now in our, 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 our pre-season. <laughs> so the, the dice, so working at the dice tower is an interesting thing. I'm Tom Bassett, by the way. Uh, working at the dice tower is an interesting thing because it's always jumping from this to this to this to this to this. You know, and a lot of jobs are like that, I suppose. Um, but you know, there's the there's the winter crunch. So the winter crunch for us is always, hey, it's 12 games of Christmas, and then we got the winter spectacular, and then Christmas itself, a holiday, and then we're prepping for the dice tower Kickstarter, and then we run the dice tower Kickstarter, and then we have the cruise, and then we all go, <gasps> we breathe. Then we go to Dice Tower West. Then after Dice Tower West, we breathe again because we have upcoming stuff. But in March, not so much. And in April, well, not a lot either. But April, we have the 48-hour marathon, or wherever long it is. Not 48 hours, 36-hour marathon. Um, we have the 36-hour marathon coming up then. And then in May, we're down in the rabbit hole um, because May... Many of us have kids, so I got a daughter graduating from college, and uh, me and Roy are going to be going to uh, Board Game Geek Spring. So you'll see me there if you go to that one. And um, but then after May, it just da -da 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 because we have so many things. We got the Summer Spectacular, we have um, Dice Tower Con East, we have uh, Gen Con, and then then the retreat, and then the Essen, and then you're just you know flies to an end. So right now is our chance to breathe and play a lot of games too. So anyhow, um, yeah, I know my audio is a little lower than normal. I'll move the mic up a little higher, but about, meh. Either way, um, if you have questions, this is your chance to ask those questions and I will try to get them answered. So let's see if we got any questions here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Well, I have no questions. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs> um, let me see. Didn't play a ton of games this weekend. I was mostly working on taxes, playing Baldur's Gate 3, and um, I played some board games with my kids and stuff. My daughter's birthday is today. She is 15. Wow, have times fl flown. When I started Dice Tower, she did not exist. Um, and now she is 15. I have a 15-year-old and a 16-year-old in my house. Uh, along with a... Clara just turned 18. Jimmy j turned 10. So times are approaching. The next birthday, I was told, is my grandson is turning too soon. Whew. All righty, let's see here. Thoughts on the Covenant expansion for Return to Dark Tower? There will be... No way. Did Chris and Wendy review that yet? I don't remember if they did or not. I have not played it yet, but I I want to. Let's see here. Camera does seem out of focus. I agree on that. I'm not sure what's going on here. Maybe it's focusing on something else. Maybe the auto focus is off. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's on now. Nah. Not sure. Okay, anyhow, let's see here. Um what are my Easter plans? My Easter plans are my kids are coming home from college. Amy and Holly and Amy's boyfriend are coming to visit. So, I mean, we're going to do our Easter activities at church. I'll have a big Easter meal, which I have not yet planned what I'm making. I need to work on that. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting distracted here. I'm thinking about the food. Uh, and then uh, we're also going to probably hit up the youth fair here. That is a big, Miami has a big fair every spring. So we'll probably go to that. Uh, what's new with the chief? It's been a while since uh, we've caught up with the chief. The chief uh, was had been kidnapped, actually, for... I. It wasn't the longest time he's been kidnapped. He was once kidnapped for 87 and a half years. Um, but, yeah, well, <laughs> a pity on his captors when he got released. 
This time it was like 17 months. Although, again, you know, because of the, the wibbly wobbiness of the time the continuum and all that, it, it doesn't seem that long. He was kidnapped from his kidnapping. This was a weird one. It was like kidnap inception. He was kidnapped from the kidnapping in another kidnapping. And so when the rescuers came in, they were contending against multiple forces. And it was a very difficult black ops situation to go in there and get him out. And normally the portals help tremendously, but there was a waft field in place. And so the whole thing kind of, it just took longer, I think. So he's actually having some recuperation time right now because uh, that's general policy of the agency after every kidnapping. You get a year, although they ask you to um, uh, put as much of that year into, you know, a time funnel as you can. So you're actually not gone from the agency that long. So I think he'll be gone from the agency like five days or something to that effect. All righty, let's see here. Would I buy a game that scores differently based on which deck runs out first? Well, maybe, yes, I don't know. I, I, that, that, that's, that's not really a lot to tell me what the game is about. How are you liking Baldur's Gate 3? So Baldur's Gate 3 is a fascinating game. I loved Baldur's Gate 2. I played Baldur's Gate 2 a lot. I thought it was a fantastic game. I actually, I played Baldur's Gate 3 for a while, and um, I just restarted it mostly because one of the characters I wanted to join my party, I may have accidentally killed them. I did a few other things I didn't mean to do. And I was like, okay, I'm going to start over and be much more careful. I even missed one of the starting characters that you can have join your party because I didn't even know they were there. I read like, I was going from act one to act two. And I, I went and was like, I read a list of things to miss. And I was like, oh, I missed like all these things. And some of these things are irrevocable. So I started over again. And I was astounded with my choices and how differently the game is playing this time. It's fascinating. I play, in games I play mostly good. I mean, I will, if no one's looking, I'll loot a place to the, to the ground, right? But I play mostly good. I don't, I don't particularly like playing evil in these games. You know, when I give you the option, I try not to have people tear each other's throats out. If there's a fight, I'll step in the middle, blah, blah, blah. And if there's bad guys, it doesn't take me much to go, you know what, forget this. Let's, we're throwing down and fighting. So the game is astounding. I'm not thrilled with the MA rating. The mature rating on the game because I can't really play it around the kids a lot of times, especially some of the characters and stuff. And uh, I don't know. I don't know why all that stuff needed to be in there. I know you can cut some of it out with the, with filters and all. Um, but the stories are pretty interesting. It's very fun combat. Uh, it's very D and D, um, way more so than the Baldur's Gate Two. So I'm I'm enjoying it a lot. Is that Butch from Tom and Jerry in your tie? It is indeed. When will I be coming by to KL, Malaysia again? Well, I don't know. If I ever get invited, though, I would definitely consider going there since that's my favorite city I've ever been to. Rate cashew nut, Brazilian nut, peanut, almonds. Oh, cashew nut. Cashews are my favorite. Cashews are my favorite. It's cashews, almonds, then uh, I guess Brazilian nuts and peanuts, although Brazilian nuts don't have a ton of flavor for me. I noticed on the glass crowd surfing video that Expedition Northwest Passage didn't get covered. I remember the old version was well received by you and wondered your thoughts on the new one. Well, that's, that's sometimes games just fall through the cracks and don't get covered, and that happened to be one of them. There was no way around it. I did not like the original Northwest Passage, so you might be thinking of Mike who enjoyed it, but that, that's all that happened. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes games fall through. We try to get everything, but there's so many games out there. When was the last time we got together with my grandchildren? When my, daughter, when my granddaughter was born. They live four and a half to five hours away. Have I had a chance to play early the new Veiled Fate expansion from IV Studios? I have not, but I will be playing it this Friday live here in the studio. What's the most deluxe fight you had game you've bought on crowdfunding that was worth it? Small World, for sure. 
If cost wasn't an issue, would you prefer to live in the city or suburbs? That's a hard question. I don't know. I mean, I guess I live in the suburbs now, but I also like living in the city. It doesn't matter to me. Let's see here. If aliens were to invade Earth and you are challenged at a dance-off to save the planet, which dance moves would you bust off? Out. I would actually help the, the planet make our necessary uh, death requirements. Has the chief met your grandchildren yet? No. Do I watch any of the other big board game YouTubers? I watch occasionally, and, and that's not like a negative thing against board game YouTubers at all. It's just that I don't watch them that often. Um, I, and it's, it's because um, one of the reasons I don't watch um, them as often, just time-wise. And sometimes when I have free time, I don't really want to watch stuff about board games. I watch stuff about other things. But I do watch occasionally if something happens or changes. I keep an eye on things, but I saw a video that wasn't a big board game review, it was a smaller one, but that I was like, oh, it's interesting, and I watched it, I disagreed with everything that was said in it, and then realized it was made like eight months ago, so, eh, that sort of things are interesting. What was the biggest highlight for you at Dice Tower West? I think just meeting everybody, but I I, I know, ha ha I say every time. You know what, I got to run the ready, set, bet thing. My voice was there this time. We're almost 25% through 2024. What is the best new game to date in 2024? I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe I mentioned that last week in my review. So I don't normally say these things because then people come back and say, you said this was the best. But um, let me look at my stats here. So I keep stats of how many games I play. Um... So, like, I have a, a spreadsheet here. So, right now, I have 89 games to review. Um, it seems like a lot. Well, some of them I have reviewed. Some are just getting mini reviews. But any game I play, I put on this list until I review it or I take it off the list. Um, then I have another list of games that came out in 2024 that I have played. And I rank them in order. And this helps me out at the end of the year make my top 10 list. And I've played 34 games this year so far. So that's not a lot. And then I have another tab here of how many games Ruby and Violet have played with me. So I can help them at the end of the year. And then another tab for my 40 quick game reviews. So this is the last time I'm going to say it this year. But my favorite game so far this year is A Message from the Stars. I said that in the review I did of that game too. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the games that I played from this year. I give an excellent two, so seven out of 34, so one out of five, which is pretty high, actually. And then games I think are not good from this year, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So about the same. And then games that are mediocre, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then games that are good but not excellent, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Yeah, and that's going to change as time goes by, because I'm also playing a lot of 2023 games. I just played a bunch of okay games over the weekend, but only one of them was from 2024. So, anyway, that's kind of where I'm at now. What's my favorite type of trivia game when you bet on whether the trivia is correct or not? Like Wits and Wagers. Rob Orr mentioned possibly being a tribute again. Has he spoken to you about that? I have not heard from Rob in a while. Last time I talked to him was at Dice Tower East, I guess. Maybe since then. Um, the Dice Tower Kickstarter earned a good chunk less this year than last year. Do you have any analysis as to why? And, uh, well, 
I don't think it was a good chunk. It was definitely down a bit. Um, I definitely always expect it to be down <laughs> every year, right? Like we can't keep rising every year. We still did very well with the Kickstarter. I was very happy with what we got. And the Kickstarter, in a sense, is not over because we haven't launched a backer kit, although that will launch soon. So keep your eyes open for that. Plan to launch that in, within a month easily, hopefully sooner. Um, so who knows? I mean, Dice Tower has multiple streams of revenue. Uh, the Kickstarter is our, our biggest stream of revenue, but you know we get things from other sources like the, our conventions and things like that. But, you know, uh, we make do with what we get. Uh, that does mean that like the stretch goal that I wanted to do there that we did not get to won't happen because I can't afford them. I'm still working on the top 100 for the other contributors and uh, I mean for our other people here in the studio. They'll still put those out. But for me flying special guests in to join them, that that's not going to happen because, well, I, you know, that was the, what the money for the stretch. I don't make stretch goals up. I mean, I do make them up, but uh, what I mean is I pick things that will fit, you know, the money for those stretch goals then goes to pay for those stretch goals. This is where a lot of companies who run Kickstarters run into problems because they promise stretch goals that they then can't fulfill. We really work hard to try to say we're going to do ours. Um, but there's a lot of things that could have been, you know, why it went down farther, but we got, we fund it. I'm happy about that. I will not complain about that. I have not complained even privately. I have not complained about what we got because I'm getting paid to do a job that I love and I'm thrilled about it. Um, I, I, I think about this all the time. I was just reading, you know, I, I don't go on Twitter anymore because of the negativity. I cut Twitter out of my life, and honestly, Blue Sky, which is a replacement Twitter, is about as bad. It's the same stuff, same people, same place, the same things. And I went on there over the past couple days and read some pretty negative stuff about the Dice Tower again. And I was like almost a little bit down about it. And I thought, why am I letting this stuff get me down? You know, people tend to think that there's big conspiracies behind everything, you know, like, oh, why did so-and-so leave this organization? Oh, what's the real story? Eh, people don't get along. And um, sometimes, or whatever it might be, or they have different opinions on things, but I am happy. I think the Dice Tower is stronger than it's ever been. I'm thrilled about the Dice Tower audio podcast. I think Julie has been a great new addition to that, me, Julie, and Eric. I think that here at Dice Tower, we have a great staff. We, we, you know, we're definitely sat that Mike, you know, moved away, but we have been able to integrate him more and more remotely. We have Sam doing more content for us now, and it's just neat to see all these things coming back. So I'm very positive about this. You know, it's easy. I mean, I'm, I'm usually in a foul mood <laughs> the weeks I'm doing taxes, which is now because I just really dislike everything about doing taxes. Um, and yet... And yet the, I cannot be upset with what I have. It is fantastic and wonderful. And I do a lot of administrative stuff and I am bogged down in emails and fill out forms and do this and do that. But I have seven wonderful children. I have two grandchildren. I have the most amazing wife. Y'all are just do not know how much better my wife is than every other wife in the world. She's fantastic. Just putting up with me is good enough. I have fantastic employees um, who work really hard and get things done and do such a great job. They don't even need me on the channel anymore, you know, and, and that's good. And I'm thrilled about all that. So why would I get down when a bunch of people don't like me? You know, so I don't even know where we went from that. Oh, and why the Kickstarter? <laughs> Anyhow, things are great. Do you find that your first impressions when playing a game are fairly accurate? Meaning, have you ever erroneously judged a game that you ended up loving after multiple plays? Sure, um, but but almost never, almost never. First impressions are almost always right. They just are, uh, of games. First impressions of people, I found that I'm terrible at that. Because I met people who I found to be uh, very much like them, and as time went by, you see their flaws more. Or the opposite, someone kind of rubs you the wrong way, and then you're like, oh, they actually turned out to be a really nice person. 
And I, th- I think we should not judge people ever by first impressions. Judge a game by your first impressions all you want. I really believe in that. It's a game. I don't have to worry about its feelings. And a game should make a fantastic first impression. Now, you always take everything else into account, the number of players, where you were playing it, the people you played with, blah, blah, blah. Judge games, not people. Um, I need to figure out why they changed an option here. And I'm going to quick look here at my preferences here. So um, I'm, I'm wondering why when I put up one of these comments, ah, automatically hide comment overlays after 45 seconds. Now, nah, I'm going to say automatically do it after 180 seconds. There we go. I wonder why it just keeps popping them off the screen after people ask me questions. Ah, I fixed something. Alrighty. Any advice on learning rules apart from reading the manual carefully? I would always set the game up to learn the rules. If you just sit there and read the rule book, it doesn't make sense. Setting the game up and reading the rules and moving pieces around helps so much more. You'll see a little bit of that today and we'll play it live. I understand how you feel about playing prototypes. Done. <laughs> but have you played Mike and Dan's I Made You a Mixtape? Excited for them. So, yes, excited for them. No, I haven't played it. They haven't even asked. They haven't even mentioned it. If it wasn't for the fact that stuff bleeds over from their podcast and ours, I mean, I would not have even heard about it uh, because Mike never mentions it to me. Um, so, I might play it right before it's published, but I am pretty careful about this sort of thing. After having hand surgery, I learned how hard some games are to play with one hand. This experience gave me the idea for a top 10 list for you, top 10 games for limited use people. Maybe, but again, that's very specific because someone who is has hard eyesight, um, bad eyesight for someone who only has one hand. These are a lot of things. Your best bet is to find someone with the same disability as you and to ask them for advice on that topic. On a scale of 1 to 10, how hyped are you for Stormlight 5? I'm very hyped. Um, uh, Stormlight, the fifth book in Stormlight here. Um, what is the release date? Because he did announce it. Oh, it's December 6th. <laughs> Interesting. That's a while away, but <laughs> George R. R. Martin fans, I know when my book's coming. Um... Yeah, I'll take part of my vacation to read that book. I'm very interested for that. I don't need a week-long vacation to read it. I can read it in a day, probably. Paul says, Tom, it looks like Dice Tower West was packed with tons of events and things to do. Is there a plan to increase the events and panels for Dice Tower East? We've already announced that. There's lots of new things going to be at Dice Tower East and panels and things, so yes. And if you are coming to Dice Tower East and want to run a panel or do something, please email me at tom at dicetower.com as soon as possible. It would be great to see Dice Tower covering Game Crafter games. Any chance of that happening? There is zero chance of that happening. I should say zero, but it's a very tiny chance. That's close to zero. I want to be careful. I think Game Crafter is fantastic. I say this because I don't want to. I don't want to feel like I have some sort of prejudice against Game Crafter. The idea that you can go to Game Crafter and get some games published. You just want to make ten games, you get ten games. You want to make two, you have two. And if you want to make a really good prototype, Game Crafter is your place to go. It's super. But for reviewing purposes, Game Crafter has literally thousands. They probably have over ten thousand games there. I don't know if you noticed. We already get so many games that come into the Dice Tower. We can't review them all. I read a comment. <laughs> <laughs> on Reddit, which made me laugh, where it said somebody should review all the games that Dice Tower does not cover. They can make a living that way. Well, maybe. And there's a lot of games we don't cover, but I was amused by that because we cover more than everybody else. You can say about any channel. Um, but uh, the uh, there's just so many games that come out. We just don't, I mean, we work hard to get to them. Game Crafter games would add double, triple that load. And for a lot of games that have no gatekeeping whatsoever, 
How do I know a game, a, a game crafter game is any good? I don't. I don't know if a published game is any good or not, but someone put some money behind that to do it. Or people were convinced on Kickstarter. Still play lots of bad games. My ratio would go up worse. You probably wouldn't like me as a reviewer if I played game crafter games. When am I coming up to Greenville to play pinball? Uh, well, actually, I was at the Pinball Hall of Fame at Dice Tower West. Did not see you there. Could have played pinball then. Um, but I have some thoughts on this. So I'll share these with you all because it's still in the processing phase. But I was thinking of the idea of the Dice Tower taking a road trip either up the East Coast or on the Southern Coast up and around Florida, Southern Coast. But East Coast seems like the easiest one. Start in Homestead, go up till I'm sick of it, and come back. And we would stop at game stores at different nights. It would take a lot of work to set it up. It would be probably, I don't know, a week trip maybe, maybe longer than that, you know, because you're stopping at different game stores um, up and down. The problem is money and time. So I'm sure that game stores could help with this if we stopped there and ran different events, but this would also require some setting up. So for this game store, hey, we're coming in Wednesday night, this one, Thursday night, you know, and that might not work for some game stores. But it's an idea. I haven't floated it to too many game stores yet, but it's an idea that I've been having that I thought might be an interesting, fun thing to do. We'll see. But don't read too much into that because there's a lot of planning, a lot of money, and a lot of time. How did you all know when you wanted to have another kid or how many kids to have? My wife and I are trying to figure that right now. It's a tough thing to figure out. That's for each couple to figure out. When I was d dating my wife, I said, I want to have 10 kids. And I was just throwing out a random number. You know, I wanted to have a lot of kids. She also wanted to have a lot of kids. So that was convenient. But we didn't really know what it was like to have any kids, really. We had our first kid, and that was fantastic. And, um, well, after... A couple miscarriages, we had our first baby, right? No, we had Melody first, then a couple miscarriages. Um, so Melody was our first daughter. Then Amy came along after that. And then we just kept wanting to have more kids. Um, and then after Jack died, if you don't know about that, uh, go to jackvassal.org. One of my, my son died, my seventh son, or my seventh child. I mean, Jimmy is my seventh child. But Jack was born and died a couple months after that. and then. That didn't really dissuade us as much. And then Sunny, uh, we named her Sunny. She was, my wife was seven months pregnant when she lost Sunny. Um, and at that point, we were like, we, we're not going to have any more kids uh, because we can't, I, I, I didn't want to, the doctor said to me, you can't keep doing this with your wife. And I was like, I agree. We, we, we can't have any more kids. You know, we, I, I can't keep, you know, we, we lost Jack and we lost Sunny. In, in, in like two or three years, and that was a tough thing. So no more kids. And then uh, God gave us Jimmy anyway. And that was fantastic. We were definitely very nervous and scared during that pregnancy. And then after Jimmy, we're like, I think we're done now. And we are. And every once in a while, I'll see a baby in church, and I'll be like, Lord, look at the baby. And she says, you have grandchildren. I'm like, you're right. So I don't know. It's going to be different for everybody. Um, seven kids is a lot. You spend a lot of money on kids. And there will be people who will argue over you don't spend enough time with each individual kid or yada, yada, yada. I, you know, whatever. I, I'm one of five. Um, and I never regretted that for a second. Um, we take one kid out to each each Sunday. You know, it's their day. Me and my wife just go with them. I try to spend time with my kids. I'm not a great father, I'm sure. But I try to do my best. And, uh, yeah. Um, seven's a lot. I don't recommend seven for everybody, <laughs> uh, but I don't regret it even, even a little. Um, are there many different nationalities that attend Dice Hour East or West? I guess, sure. I know there was actually quite a few Canadians at Dice Tower West this time, but there are people come from around the world, but it's tricky. It's hard to travel, travel a while to come. Most people who come to our cons are Americans, but there are people who come because we have them in, in, in Orlando and Vegas for that reason. It's easier airports to fly, them in, to fly into. 
which of the heat modules do you always play with and which would you do without? I just play the advanced version of heat. I don't know much about the modules. I just play with the advanced cards and that's it. I don't know what other modules there might be. I never play with weather in any, any, any racing game. The hobby has grown exponentially from when you first started doing reviews. What's something you miss about the hobby scene before it became this cottage industry? I guess maybe if there's anything I'd miss, it'd be the wonder of new games was even more grandiose because you'd be like, what is this game? Look at this game. This game is fantastic. Now you're like doing that. You're like, look at this. Oh, here's the next one. Wow. Oh, and the next one. And yeah, you could not do that on your own, right? But there's still so many games out there that the wonder is not as strong, I suppose. But things change. Someone on the crew said they would give you a copy of Subterra to add to the Dice Tower Library. Did we get it? I don't know. I'd have to ask Wendy. I don't know if we got it or not. If Dr. Kinesi was designed a game with a bow tie theme, who would be more excited? You or Mike? It would definitely be Mike. I thought the highlight of Dice Tower West would be winning Space Base with the You Win card. <laughs> um... Okay, maybe that's my, yeah, that's pretty high up there. Can I explain that? So Space Base is a game in which you are rolling dice from 2 to 12. You, you, you have cards 2 to 12 in front of you. You roll two dice. Actually, they're 1 to 12. I'm sorry, 1 to 12 in front of you. You roll two dice. Whatever numbers you get. Let's say I get 1 and 5. I can activate my 1 card and my 5 card, or I can activate my 6 card. That's it. Uh, activating cards will give you money, income, or points. As you get money, you can buy new cards. Whenever you buy a new card, you, there's different cards out there to buy. I might buy this card that goes in my three slot. The card that's in my three slot is then flipped upside down where there's another effect. And now that card goes off on other people's turns. So if they roll a three, I can make that card activate. So there's a card that if it's on your turn and you roll a 12 three times, a 12, which is one out of 36 chance, you win the game. You put a cube on it each time. But there are ways to mitigate that. So I managed to get a card that pointed down at it that uh, said uh, on the 11 slot diagonally. So if someone else rolled an 11, I got a cube on it. And then I was able to add, I had cubes that added to other people's rolls. So I was able to take someone else's roll, add to it, make it 11, point down at it. And that is how I won. But there are other ways to do it. Sometimes there's a way to switch your 12 card and your 9 card. And then switch your 9 card with your 5 card. Then you're rolling it faster. I've heard it been done, but I'd never seen it till Dice Tower West. Thanks, Blake, for 21 months of membership. Huzzah. Ever dabbled in Hex and Counter War Games? For sure. I definitely did that as a kid. I went, you know, I used to go to the thrift store. I, I went to the thrift store every day. We had one within walking distance of our house, and I would ask my mom to go there, and I'd go look at the board games when I was a teenager. I would always go there, look at the board games, and occasionally I'd have a couple dollars to buy a board game and I would buy some of these old Avalon Hill games and look at them and read the rules. I had Gettysburg and Panzer Blitz too and things like that. Did I pre-order the painted or unpainted Hero Escape? I don't believe I pre-ordered it actually. Hmm. How important do you think theme is when showing a brand new person their first hobby board game? Oh, it all depends on the person. I would say for the majority of people, the theme matters a lot, but not for everybody. Let's see here. Thoughts on the Percy Jackson show. Uh, I watched it with my kids the first two or three episodes. I didn't love it. I mean, the kid's a fine actor. I didn't understand what he was doing. They're like, pick anyone you want to go with you on a trip. So he picks a couple people, then spends the rest of the trip, or at least the parts I was watching, arguing and being really annoyed at these people that he picked. It's, it's definitely a kid-focused show, so I bought it for that. I just wasn't as interested in it. So 
Let's see here. Question, I know you do not like the character Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> well, I don't dislike him that much, I guess. I'm just not a big fan of the smarmy guy who knows everything and then proceeds to talk down consentingly to everybody, condescendingly to everybody else around him. And it's got even more so in more modern versions. And people love that. They like House. They like these different shows where the person's like, mm, so obvious. I can't believe you guys don't see it. I guess. But we wouldn't want to hang out with these people in real life, so why would I want to read books about them either? The best fictional detective is the priest guy. Um, was it Poirot? Well, who was the, the, the priest detective? I apologize. I don't remember his name. I feel like we mentioned this in a previous Q&A, and then someone told me. What's the most impressive trick you've seen Joey perform? It's the first one. He came up to me at a con and said, hey, I know you like magic tricks. I was like, I do indeed. So he took my phone and said, think of a famous person. And I, for a moment, was going to say Will Wheaton because we were just talking about Will Wheaton. And I said, no. I said, John Wayne. Well, he took my phone and then gave it back to me. And he said, I said, John Wayne. And then he, he said, look, and on my phone was a picture of John Wayne. And the thing is, that, that still bugs me about this trick, is that I would... You asked me any other day of the week, and I wouldn't have said John Wayne. And the only reason I said John Wayne was because earlier that day I'd run into someone who said, hey, what's your favorite John Wayne movie? And I've went since and found that person and really buttoned them down to see if they were in league with Joey, and they, they don't know who Joey is. So I don't know how he did it. John Wayne. Okay. Do you know who will be reviewing Let's Go to Japan yet? No, we just got it <laughs> last week. So I, uh, I don't think anyone's played it yet. It's definitely going with me to my gaming tomorrow, but we'll see. Dice Tower West was great. I've never been to a con at the Westgate. Please tell me something about the hotel. It would get me excited for the con. Well, the, the space is huge. If you thought the Rio space for our con was big, the Westgate space is even bigger. I'm very excited about that. Um, I like the Westgate. It's a nice smallish hotel compared to like the ones on the Strip. It's not too far. It's walkable from the Strip, I think 15 minutes or so. But it also, you can get on the, the, the line, the train line, which will take you directly to the Strip too. And someone was telling me that you could get like a $20 all week pass to just use that train whenever you want. I thought that's pretty good. I'll end up doing that. So I, 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 I liked being at the Westgate last time. I was not I was excited to move to the Rio because we were getting a bigger space. But I like the hotel at the Westgate better. Early on this year, you entertained an idea of letting the Rothfather to do his top 100. Maybe we have to get him down here. He will be swinging down for the 36-hour marathon, so there's that. Um, is it tough to keep your YouTube schedule up to date? Can you ask more what you mean by that? Um, because I definitely have a schedule. You all don't see it, but we have a schedule behind the scenes. And that schedule is built out to, where did I stop doing it? I think it's built out to July. Where do I got? March, April, May, June, July. Yeah, I think it's up to July. Um, and so, I mean, we don't schedule exact games very far in advance. Usually they're only scheduled a week or so in advance, but, um, yeah, but the schedule is out there. Any plans on making a top 10 list of games with a crew of games that deserve a better reprint? Maybe. I don't know if I want to do that or not, though, because... That might be one I do in the future. I'll think about it. I never read Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarians. I should probably get around to doing that at some point. Um, what is the next big advancement you would want to see to make the next video game you play better? I don't know. I'm okay with the video games. I play video games, and I have to, I mean, I have to be caught up in a video game right away. But I'm just 
amazed at them. I can play the same video game for a long time. So I've been playing Elden Ring, Elden Ring for a long time. I paused it. I, I could not beat this, fi the final boss, actually. I got to the final boss, like, the Elden Beast. Now, to be fair, I only fought him, like, six times. So I get bored easily. I don't want to fight the same guy 200 times. Um, the problem with the, the final bad guy in Elden Ring is you have to beat the first guy, and then you fight this. I mean, the first guy was hard, but I beat him. The second guy, I'm always like, I'm, I'm half dead here. Um, but, uh, yeah, I... Uh, Anyway, so then I'm now I'm playing Baldur's Gate, um, so that will keep me occupied. The Elden Ring expansion comes out in May or June, so I'll play that when that comes out. I don't know. I love video games. I just don't play many. Are you planning on watching the new Ghostbuster movie? Yeah, maybe. It looks interesting. Definitely looks like fan service the movie, but. That might not be bad. What tips do you have in the instance you have to teach a game you haven't played before straight from the rule book? I've seen you do it several times and it's pretty amazing. Well, I appreciate it. that's nice to say, although a lot of people would probably disagree with you. Um, I don't recommend it. I am such a hypocrite by doing it. I feel like I can do it better than a lot of people, but the tips, I don't know, man. I, I'm i a speed reader, so that helps. I read really fast, and I've also played 8,000 games, so I read these blocks of text real quick, and then I'm like, okay, I understand that. I understand that process it works. It still helps to see the stuff on the, on the table, and I get it, but the, first of all, when you speed read, you jump over words a lot because you're skipping sentences and words to just get the, the, the essence. Not always great for rules. And by me playing 8,000 plus games, I will play, I will assume that a game works this way when it does not, and it's different. So I, I've been tripped up many, many times. Let's see here. Tom hates the Midwest. Now, I'm just saying it would be easy for us to drive up the east. We are. We drive the Midwest. We come up for Gen Con. Um, let's see here. Any tips, insider knowledge for an exhibitor doing their first convention this summer in July and around the Orlando area? If it's your first con, you just you go there. I would start talking it up ahead of time, pushing the game, telling people the game's going to be there, get people excited about the game, show off the game there. Your tip, it depends. If you're trying to sell, that's going to be different if your tip is the demo because different people do different things. Um, but just that aura of excitement. And no, don't expect too much, I think I would always tell people, too. Um, do you still like Codex? I was considering getting on eBay, but I wonder if your opinion on the game has changed or if there's a game that replaced it for you. It'd be hard to replace Codex because it's such a weird, unique game. It's deck building and fighting the other person. I don't play it a ton anymore. This might be a catch a palooza that we do at some point, but but I still like it. Have I seen the retail edition of twenty fifth century version of Rod? The components barely fit back in the box. It's a huge issue. I don't know if it's that huge of an issue because I again I haven't heard many people complaining about it, and it gets played a ton. Um, yeah, we covered Deluxe Vision because that's what we had. How do you determine, define fiddly? Fiddly was when there's a lot of little moving pieces and you have to keep track of all of them. That's how I define fiddly. Like, oh, I need to do this and this. Oh, don't forget to do that. Oh, there's also this. Oh, I need to check this and that. That's what I determined fiddly. And that definitely pulls me out of the game a little bit because... You're having to do these things and you'll forget to do them and that's always detracts from enjoyment. Oh, I forgot to take that coin over here and I forgot to add this bonus because they're just little things that get added in.
<laughs> Could you recommend a gateway board game which lasts around three to four hours for four players? No. No. What's wrong with you? People who've never played games before, you want to introduce them to gaming with a three to four hour game? No. I, now, maybe what you mean here is you mean what's an intro to longer games? I'm not the person to even answer that question, but I, I don't know. Did the Dice Tower have any input on bringing Comic Hunters to the U.S. apart from introducing it, or was it all uh, away, um, little, 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 Arcane Wonders? Um, no, I mean, I didn't have a lot of input. I, I definitely introduced it, pushed it. I wanted this to be Dice Tower Central years ago. The problem was we had to decide how is it going to work. You're going to use the comics or not. If you use the comics, Marvel Comics, then you need to get the Marvel license. Marvel license is super expensive. So it's easier to work with another company. In this case, Spin Master has the Marvel license. And there's just lots of hoops to jump through. It took so long. I've been obviously hinting very strongly that it's going to come out eventually. And it's coming out this year. So I'm very pleased. Glad to see you didn't lose your voice this year for Dice Tower West. I was also glad. Hi, Tom. And Ark Nova, do you think the new action cards that give free gold, etc., weaken the sharp balance of the base game? No. I know you love to read. Do you ever do audiobooks? I do not. Mostly because I like to read myself. It's just one of those things. I love to read so much. Audiobooks almost slow it down for me. And also, there's so many other audio things. I love listening to podcasts, although one of my favorite podcasts, The Magnus Archives, is essentially an audiobook. But, um, yeah, Father Brown, thank you. This is an answer a long time ago for the, um, my favorite detective. Miss Marble is, is up there for me, but Father Brown. Perot is okay. I like him fine, too. But Father Brown and Miss Marble are my two favorite. Saw you playing Star Wars Unlimited. What did you think of it? Well, you'll see some stuff for Star Wars Unlimited. We have our full review coming up this week. You've talked before about homeschooling. We do not homeschool, but I love the idea of seeking the best from any system. Can you share any favorite activities you've done while homeschooling? I mean, my 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 kids and wife are much more involved in homeschooling than I am. I'm more I'm 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 the uh, the chairman of the board who shows up once in a while. Um, but they get together every Tuesday with other homeschoolers. Every Tuesday is a big thing. I know tomorrow I think there's a big Easter egg hunt or whatever, and they're getting together with other homeschoolers, and they're going to have fun doing that. What's the last game that had you thinking about it when you went to bed that night? Ah, that'd be telling, but it's a game we're reviewing this week. I always thought when a Dice Tower did these live Q&A with Tom, it was at 1 in the morning. What? I would do a Q&A at 1 in the morning. I doubt many people would watch it. When is the next spe spectacular? The next spectacular is in June. But you don't actually put the scheduled shows on YouTube early. Oh, I see. Well, we don't put them on early because they pop up in people's feed as soon as you schedule them. And then people are like, oh, I want to watch this. Oh, it's not coming out for three weeks. So that people get annoyed by that. Have you scheduled the next History of the Dice Tower video? I don't know when I, when did I, <laughs> these things always kind of, History of the Dice Tower. I don't know when the last time I posted it. So History of Dice Tower was 14 is the last one, I think. That can't be right. That's the year 2017. That's seven years ago. Um, I try to do them so that I actually have 19 is the last one. And that is 2022. Wait a minute. 2022? Why would I do it? Oh, yeah. I'm not doing... Yeah. So I did 2022 in 2023. Now, I'm not going to discuss 2023 yet. Not for a while. I'll probably wait till 2026 before I do any more of them. Then I'll do 
three, four, and five. Something like that. Okay, where are we? Wow, today's going fast. The time. Um, when making a video, what's the process from the end of the recording to the upload? Any multiple takes, QA process, blooper, I don't know what a QA process is. We don't have too much of a blooper reel because we don't normally keep bloopers. Um, so a review, we schedule reviews, we see who plays them. And so a review for me, let's say I'm doing my own review. The first thing I do every review is always do the overview first. I do that for a bunch of reasons. One, it's a good refresher on how the game plays. You're like, oh, that's right. That's how the game plays. By doing that overview, I remember how the game plays. And then, um, then secondly, the overview, sometimes I'll be like, wait a minute, we played something wrong. That happens occasionally. Reviews off the schedule. Let's play it right. That's rare, but it happens. After that, then we do the intro and the outro part. We do those together. Um, and then the rest of it's editing. I, I, if I'm doing a review, I sit and think about the game a lot before I do it, too. I'll read the rule book, think about what I'm going to say for a while. Because I don't do a script, which I know people say is a bad thing. A lot of people do scripts. But most people who do scripts, I can tell they're doing scripts. And I kind of would prefer you to tell me from the heart. And I, and I think about it this way. One of the main reasons I don't do scripts is because if, if someone wants me to go to a new restaurant, and they come in, they're like, Tom. Mamma Mia is a fantastic Italian restaurant. And they and they read this flowery speech to me. That doesn't mean anything other than someone coming up to me and going, Tom, this place was amazing. And the thing I really liked was this and that. Word of mouth gets me to go to places. And fancy, I mean, some people, when they write reviews, and I'm not necessarily speaking about board game reviewers, but they write reviews. And when you're done, you're like, wow, that person can write. Do, do I like the game or not? I don't know. But they can write. Um, and then other, you know, so that I don't ever want it to be that way. Like, man, Dice Tower can talk. No, I want people to go, man, they love games. Um, is there any other type of movie than fan service? Don't think I'd enjoy critic service or hater service. Well, now I know, I, sure, and I know what you mean. Like someone, want, I remember the first reviews I saw of Avengers Endgame, like, it's complete fan service. I'm like, yeah, it is. Thank you. But when I say fan service, sometimes I think they throw things, rather than continue a story, they will throw things in just to make fans happy. Um, so that's what I mean when I say fan service. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. It can be fine. I mean, they're bringing back the original Ghostbusters gang, the ones that are still alive. In this new one, and that's what the trailer was like. Hey, look, uh, 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 uh. I'm not as thrilled with that as seeing a, a really good story, but eh, we'll see. Um, by the way, I watched Wonka this weekend with my family. That was a nice movie, it felt like an older movie, actually. Like, it didn't feel like a movie from 2024. And I said that in a positive way. Can you do a ranking of all your favorite Summoner War factions? I probably will do that soon. It's been a while since I've done that. Tom, what's the most mundane activity in a board game that in life that should be glamorized in a board game theme that hasn't already? I'm not answering that. Come on now. Anyone from the Dice Tower going to Origins? I don't think so at this point. Do you listen to or follow any stand-up comedians? I listen on Dry Bar occasionally. And then if I like someone, I might go listen to more. Jim Gaffigan I like a lot. Uh, Michael Jr. There's not a ton of comedians that I follow, really. But if I find one, I'll listen to them for a while, then move on. How many games do you say per year do you purge from the Dice Tower collection? 300, maybe? I don't know. That's a lot. It saddens me when I hear replace and board game in the same sentence. Well, I don't know that that's a bad thing. Um, it's, it's, if there's a better game, you should replace it. Whenever someone compliments you, you downplay it. 
<laughs> Have you always had a hard time with compliments? I think you're fantastic. No, I, I, I would be a fool to say I don't like compliments. Of course I like compliments. Everyone likes compliments. Why would you not like compliments? I just... You know, it just feels like the natural reaction. You don't want to be egotistical. When someone says you're good at something, you're like, I am indeed good at that. <laughs> um, Sterling Games said they're working on a second edition of Codex. Probably be on Kickstarter next year. Meh, okay. It's easy to repack raw retail edition. There's a photo on BGG explaining it. The main factor is shaking the box forward and back for the box to shut. Look, I don't have a dog in this fight, but I'm going to say that's not easy. You just said it's easy. If easy involves me looking at a picture and then shaking back and forth as like a procedure to get a box shut, that's not easy. Easy is putting a piece in a box and closing the lid. That's easy. Hard is figuring out a specific way to put stuff in the box. Not a big fan of that. The new Magnus Archives has started. Not as good so far, in my opinion. I'm struggling with it, too. I've listened to the first three episodes. It's so different than the first one, and I get that. I mean, I appreciate they're trying something new, but you're right. I don't know the new people. I don't know the characters very well. I'm confused as to who's speaking at any given point in time. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll come around on it as time goes by, but just not thrilled with it. So Magnus, it's not called the Archives anymore. It's called something else. The Magnus Chronicles or something like that. I guess I could just look at it. It's on my phone. Uh, yeah, because I keep, I keep picking something else to listen to instead of Magnus. The Magnus Protocol. That's what it is. So they're up to 10. And uh, they're definitely um, they're definitely dropping them faster than I'm listening to them. How good are you at chess? Not particularly. You mentioned Will Wheaton earlier in the podcast. You have a favorite appearance or show he was in? Not really. I mean, his modern stuff where he shows up in shows like in Big Bang Theory where he's Will Wheaton. I don't love that stuff. I mean, I guess people like it. I guess I liked him as Wesley Crusher. What are your top 10 movie foods? Food items that only show up in a movie and look delicious. Uh, like a French, French bread always sticking out of the grocery bag. I'm amused by that. Um... I don't know. Let me quick jump on here and look at the, all these questions. Gleason says, just want to say I love the shows. Various crew members do pick six roundup stacks of games. The comparisons are fantastic and helpful. I appreciate that. They're doing a good job with that. No, no, we're going to do top 100s from the rest of the Dice Tower crew. It's going to happen this year, Ryan. I just don't know when and how yet. I'm working on figuring out the best way to do that. So that looks like it. And by the way, we're, I have not seen a live action after I started watching the original one with my kids. Then they kept watching it when I wasn't around. So now I don't know. I don't know. After I wasn't really grabbing, grabbing me, I don't think it's bad. I'm actually watching a. Hilarious show, my kids, called Delicious in Dungeon, which is hilarious. Really enjoying that one. Um, okay, so anyhow, that's it. That's it for another live Q&A, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back in three hours from now with We'll Play It Live. Today we'll be playing some two-player games back and forth. So you'll see we're going to switch them out a bit, so you'll see that when it comes. Playing games for the first time. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. If you haven't signed up for Dice Tower East, tickets are getting lower and lower of the ones that are left. It is going to sell out. And then you'll email me and say, I want to come. You definitely want to come. Dice Tower East, it's going to be fantastic. I, you should see 
the dexterity games that room area now I have for dexterities. It's going to be terrific. Um, yeah, so keep that in mind. And if you like listening to the Dice Tower rather than watching it, check out Dice Tower um, Audio, which is a podcast where you can just listen to some of the ones where there's more talking, like Board Grape Smorgasbord, Q&As, Top Tens, things like that. Alrighty, I'll see you all next time. Bye!